Oh, should just go this much. I decided to go, you can tell where the light is, huh? The good light. Whoop. Okay. Hey everyone, Aaron Stewart from The Little Black Couch. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that you had a good weekend. I um, did get some relaxation in, hang out, uh, hung out with the family. I've had a good uh, day so far, getting a lot done, but um, had a little experience over the weekend that um, frustration isn't the word but it definitely caused me to to think a little bit and thought that we could have a very good discussion on education and the benefits or lack thereof especially in the formal variety so let's uh, let's chat about it Hello, Janine. I'll bring you in right there. Ha ha. See, I did a nice little bl a blue with some opacity there. Hi, Janine. Loved your lives over the weekend. They were awesome. What a fun weekend to do all of that. So really cool. What can I do with this? Oh, I can make it even go wider. Nice, nice. So thanks for joining me today. I <clears throat> so I had an interesting experience over the weekend. We were there. There was actually a really good. Um, question or a comment that was brought up in one of these Facebook forums that I'm a part of asking about what we thought of formal education and as um, somebody who again I, I, I uh, boy I sure I've got to be careful here so I um, I had our kids educated in a private school so I'll be perfectly upfront for just, I wanted them in small class sizes where they could get as much out of their education as possible. And then once they hit a high school level, we don't really have a good option around here in Provo, Utah for private school. And, and private school's a little pricey, but you wanna integrate them socially and for all the extracurricular opportunities that you get in a public high school, which I also think is very important going forward, the socialization of it is very important. And so some of the comments, the question was kind of made, do you think as an entrepreneur that formal education is important? And um, you know, there has been a lot of discussion that maybe, and it was based on some, I, I don't, guy, I don't even remember the guy's name, but he's spoken at ClickFunnels headquarters and stuff like that, has kind of a, um, anyway, interesting way to present things. But um, anyway, that was sort of his, his comment in this, uh, there was a YouTube, uh, I guess, snippet kind of put up where he talks and, and he's with like Larry King Live, who's what? I don't know, 140 now. But he's with Larry King doing um, one of his little um, fake interview shows. You know that, I don't know how much Larry gets paid to do those, but a, a little bit, or, or I think he wouldn't be doing them anymore. But anyway, so he jumps in and at the last part of this, this presentation, he says that education failed him. And I was like, oh, darn it. I wish he hadn't said that. Because I have a very strong opinion about that. First and foremost, that, and, and, and then there was a lot of comments that came uh, down there. And I, I just, I have a real problem when we, uh, when, when people make excuses, right? So I realize that public education isn't super duper great. Uh, that we've got a lot of problems with it in society, no question about it. I, I definitely think that the um, education in the public school system, like I, I really want entrepreneurs and, and, and really some thought leaders, if we could get together, I think that we could really do a, a, we could really help public education a lot, but you're dealing with a lot of other pushback that we never talk about. We never talk about 
um, bureaucracies at the government level. We never talk about uh, unions and the, it, it all becomes a very complex issue when you talk about trying to do it. And, um, and that's why it never gets done, right? So when you, so when you go into a, this, this education system, I think that we as parents have a responsibility. We are the front lines of our children's education. We're the ones that have to take responsibility for it, as do our children. And they have to be raised that way, where it's like, okay, you're going to school, and, I, and, and it's your job to study and, and learn and I'm not, again, my two sons graduated with C averages. I'm not a big grades, you better, you know, get it and figure it out kind of a guy um, where I know that like my daughter, she's going to go flying through with straight A's. It's just who she is. She loves to study and read and loves every bit of it. But I did want them to learn something and become passionate about something. And so I have one son who's a graphic artist and loves to draw and he found that in public school and, and my son, uh, my, my second son, he came out with a lot of really, um, he came out and got certified in um, small engine repair and he loved mechanics and auto mechanics and all that. And that's great, you know, whatever it is. Um, I, and cause, cause the, there's something about education that makes it possible for you to go anywhere you want. Like I graduated in international finance <laughs> Um, and uh, organizations and management. I have a degree in economics and I just do online businesses. Uh, I didn't go to computer science. I didn't do any of that sort of stuff. So eventually this education, what we graduate in or what we study doesn't necessarily force us into a little box like I think some people believe that it does. And so as I was reading through, I, I, I quit commenting on this post because I, I could feel myself getting a little riled up. and. Um, when you're riled up, you never want to write something down that's then there for all the ages, right? No. So um, I thought that I would get on here and talk a little bit about, oh uh, man, here we go. So one of the comments was this um, gentleman went to school and graduated from high school, did very well, and they got Pell Grants, went to, went to the university, and then dropped out after a year because he hated it. And that's what he put, that he hated it. And then he went home and um, studied stuff that he wanted to study. And then he also uh, apparently took a course about, you know, Amazon and, and then made a lot of money on Amazon because of this course. And I think that that's great. But I, I still put back on him that it, it was your responsibility to learn, right, to take that challenge. There's nobody, there's, it, it doesn't matter how bad your instructor is there's a pretty good textbook there. And yeah, it's boring and all that, but there's a lot of great stuff in textbooks. A lot of great stuff in textbooks. My mother's calling. Sorry, mom, I'm live, love you. Okay, I'll, I'll call you back. She didn't hear that. But there's just so much that you can learn from a textbook. There's so much that you can learn from your classmates. And it doesn't even have to be about the topic that you're discussing. All of them have different majors and all of them have different interests. And so college really becomes the opportunity to intermingle with a lot of young minds that are super excited about learning everywhere. And so I volunteer, I volunteer and, and work with a group of youth between the ages of 19 and 29, and they are all that age. Some of them work full time, some of them are in college, some of them just whatever. Some of them are entrepreneurs, just whatever they are. And I am just so absolutely fascinated and love that I get to interact with them and, and talk with them and work through their lives together. It's beautiful, it's fascinating, it's wonderful. But when they interact with one another and they start learning from one another, that's where the, that's where the magic happens, right? When we're sharing what we are interested in and we love, and, and that comes from a bunch of different um, opportunities. So I, I um, always wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. That was it for me. I just thought that that would be the best, an orthopedic surgeon. And then I went and lived in Japan and came and, and just, I knew nothing about Japan when I went over there, um, but I went over to Japan, I learned their language, I lived over there for a few years, I just fell in love with the people, with the culture, not so much the food, not a big seafood guy. Um, but everything else I just loved about it. And I uh, hate sushi, sushi's gross. Um, but I lived over there for a long time and and then went back and forth with business. But I fell in, 
just such love with the people and the culture and stuff that I came home and I studied more about it. I'd never studied about Japanese culture or language or anything, but it became a big part of my life, still is to this day. But I wouldn't have known that had, I, had, had I not exposed myself to Japanese and all of that. Um, and then, oh dear Ruth, bless your heart. All right, here, here we go. Sushi thing. <sighs> All right. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Now we've got, I've created a, oh, dear me. Okay, so here's the problem, folks. I'm going to move these both down with sushi. Okay, once you've had sushi in Japan, then the sushi here in the States is just absolutely awful. By comparison. Okay, I'm sorry. But it just is. Um, but then when you go back to Japan and try to have it again, at least for me, I, I don't, I, seafood makes me sick anyway, so it just doesn't work out. But it's, um, so, but I had to eat some for business, up for business purposes, like you can't, saving face and all that, that's very real. Um, so so I've, I've choked it down before, but um, I spent um, many hours afterwards dealing with the aftermath, if that makes any sense. You can like sushi, that's fine. It's not a, it's not a, a personality trait or, or anything we need to, to worry about, folks. Sushi's great. Um, I just don't like it. Neither does my wife. So everything's kosher in the Stuart home. We don't, we don't have any fish in the Stuart home. We've never made fish in the Stuart home, not even fish sticks. It's completely banned. Because um, that fish smell, you never get that out. No. Uh, anyway, so... Believe me, being in Japan homes, you never get that out. So, um, what do we have here? Burgers? Noms? What's noms? I love burgers, though. I'll have a burger every night. Um, as you can tell by the physique, I like burgers. So, anyway, thanks, Janine. So, back to, so, education. Okay, here we are. This is the point, and this is where I have to be very careful because... Here's why I, I, I love education and all kinds of education. Um, because it's not based on opinion, it's based on research. So my dissertation topic was the effects of formal education on entrepreneurial perception. Okay, that was it. And it was done in over uh, 30 countries, almost 40 countries, along with Babson College, who's world renowned for their study in, entrepreneur, in, in entrepreneurship. And then uh, Thunderbird, which is where I went to graduate school. Um, and they have a, a very rich uh, international and entrepreneurial program. Um, but what we learned in the research was that education, all education, okay, formal and otherwise, but we just looked at formal, increased entrepreneurial perception in everybody. Okay, more so in underdeveloped countries, but it didn't matter. In every single country that we looked at, it had a positive correlation to one's entrepreneurial perception. The more education formal, and it didn't matter the topic, it didn't matter anything, but the more you were learning, the greater your entrepreneurial perception was within your home country. And it didn't matter which country either. Um, but what a beautiful thing. So if, if we got to be careful when we knock formal education that it doesn't do enough to teach entrepreneurship and all this because that's false. It absolutely increases our entrepreneurial perception. It, 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 makes it, it makes us more entrepreneurial. So when your kids are in elementary school and they're learning stuff, and this, this gentleman went so far as to say that he felt like his Amazon course did him better, was more beneficial to him than an A in geography and an A in, and an a in um, I don't, geography and history, I think it was. Um, great question, Janine. What do I mean by entrepreneurial perception? So. Entrepreneurial perception, that's academic talk for um, basically seeing entrepreneurial opportunities in your own country. Okay, so the more education you get, the more you are able to see entrepreneurial opportunities. Now, after we got that initial research, we looked back into it. And the cool thing was, one, it didn't matter what kind of education you were getting. It didn't matter if it was formal or informal. So I love, well... I'll stick with this. I'll stick with this train of thought. So it didn't matter what the education was about. As long as your brain was learning something, you automatically became more entrepreneurial. That's cool. 
especially, and it was it, it had the, the greatest correlation, positive correlation, in underdeveloped countries. So if we want to get underdeveloped countries out of this poverty cycle they're in, we need to educate them. Not give them a bunch of free money, but give them a bunch of, 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 of opportunities to learn stuff and make it fun and exciting because if they're learning anything, they're becoming more entrepreneurial. Now, where the problem always was is once they had this perception that there was more opportunities in their world and their life, then getting them from that to where they could actually have a business has been basically my pursuit since that time because that there is a huge drop off there. We don't have enough programs and education and support to get these more entrepreneurial minded folks to a point where they have a, 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 a really good business for it. Thank you, Janine. Thank you so much for this comment. This is huge. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I felt about it as well, that the, this particular gentleman was, and, and he made sure that he stated that he wasn't rationalizing anything, that he took responsibility, but that he was just happy that college didn't kill his love of learning. And I just don't think that it's possible to kill your love of learning if you're taking it seriously, if you're actually learning, right? So if he had been actually reading the textbooks, and I realize there's really bad teachers out there, but... To, to leave your education to a teacher, I think is a mistake. I think that a teacher is just there to augment it, but you really have to take responsibility for your own education. And I really believe that being educated in a bunch of different, um, <laughs> yes, it is the first sign. <laughs> oh boy, this is good. Thanks, Janine, this is fun. Way more fun than me just talking. Denial is the first sign, it really is, yeah. It ain't just a river, right? In Egypt, denial. So anyway, um, so that's kind of the, the big thing in all of this is that we need to make sure that, and here's the cool thing when it comes to entrepreneurship, and this is stuff that I've kind of come to understand over the years, and that is um, entrepreneurial perception increases when we learn a variety of different topics because now we have a variety of different avenues in which we can be creative. When we understand more about the world, we also see more opportunities in the world. So studying history and geography and biology and sociology and all of that is great. To expand our minds into every single one of those areas makes us better entrepreneurs. To limit ourselves into just learning about Amazon, then it just becomes about money. It just becomes about, and that's fine. I realize that there's some people are in it just for the money. But they'll realize eventually, as did Jim Carrey, that you can have all the money in the world and you're not going to find any, you're not going to find the happiness that you're seeking. The happiness comes from sharing what we know and what we learn. And it's tougher to share when we don't know and we don't learn. Right? So having a great big wide um, educational background and a bunch of different topics is a beautiful way to go. Um, and things that you may not know that you will be interested in could surprise you. So take the opportunity to look into the sciences and to explore history and geography and art and literature and everything because you don't know where your um, undeveloped talents lie. And until you expose yourself to a bunch of that, you never will. Um, so that's the thing that I always try to and press on our kids. It's like, hey, I, I'm, I'm sorry you don't like the Scarlet Letter, but read it. It's good, right? Um, I'm sorry you don't like biology or astrology or whatever the thing is, but get into it. Read about it. Take the class. Read the books. Let's see. If you still feel the same after all done with this, fine. But at least take the opportunity to see if it's going to work for you or not. That's the first thing. Now, over the weekend, I came up with a bunch of different topics that we will talk about. This one was really about education and participation. Uh, you cannot learn if you do not do the work. So going to school or being educated, any, if, I ever, I, I, if I ever hear education failed me, my head will explode. Um, you can say you failed yourself. You can say your parents failed you. You can say whatever you want. But education failed me, I think, is is too general. Um, if you take the time and do the work, 
I mean, this guy, he went to, here's another interesting thing. He only went to one year of college, but he has up on his Facebook profile the college he attended. So he thinks it's somewhat important, even though it apparently almost killed his love of learning. I don't know. I, I just, it was preposterous. The whole thing was, was preposterous. Um, and then to, and, and now, right, you've got these gurus that tell us that education and formal education, all that failed them. But hey, you know, I, I didn't go to school. I didn't learn anything. I, I went to the school of hard knocks, all of that. Um, I, didn't, I didn't go and learn a whole lot, but what I did learn, you should learn from me. Woo, I have a hard time with that. That seems like a, a very difficult um, teacher to learn from, right? I chose not to learn anything else except this one little thing and learn this one little thing from me because I, I know this one little thing, so. Anyway, that's the start. I, it looks like I've got about six days worth of stuff we're going to cover, but that's the start. Education is, as Janine said, it's your responsibility. Learning is your responsibility. And make, it is a grave mistake to limit what you learn to the, only the things that you like. Um, until you, like, I hate vegetables. Hate them. All of them. Terrible, disgusting um, miserable items on earth and I think that they should be banned and yet I know they're good for me and I've tried them all and I just don't like them but I'm glad I tried them all um, and uh, bro I mean uh, cauliflower and lima beans are the worst no Brussels sprouts they're the worst anyway thanks for joining me today on the little black patch please take responsibility for your own learning learn lots of stuff it doesn't matter what it is. It does, and if you don't like something, if you don't think that you're interested in any particular topic, study that one for fun and see if it's not true. I used to think I hated neuroscience. I love it now. Neuroscience is fascinating. We're learning tons of new stuff there. So take the time to educate yourself and widen your horizon so you can be a better entrepreneur. The solutions that you will come up with will be far better if you have an expanded view of the world and if you understand more topics. Then you'll be able to discuss more with different people and hear what they have learned and what they know. And boy, we just start building on that knowledge and we can go all kinds of new great places. But it takes us learning a bunch of new stuff. So I hope that uh, we can all do that together. Thanks for joining me. Till next time, Aaron Stewart and Buddy the Little Black Couch. He now has a designated webcam. So that's my study face. Good to have him uh, there with his own little cheap webcam. He's mad because it doesn't have as high quality as his old one did, but I needed that for something else. So thanks for joining me. Until next time, Aaron Stewart from The Little Black Couch. Entrepreneurs are and can change the world. Join me on the journey. Thanks, Janine. You're the best. We'll see ya. Bye.